Hello YouTube! I'm a work for you today. We're gonna be doing something really really cool. Uh, I love this kind of stuff uh, that we're gonna be doing today. But essentially, we're gonna be playing or taking a look at this board game, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite games uh, of as of recently. Uh, and uh, it's called Diplomacy. Uh, what you do in this game is you essentially go ahead and you command your armies to try and take over as much territory as you can. Uh, for example, if say uh, Russia here wanted to take a territory, it could move like that uh, as an order. Orders are written, for example, like this. You say, um, you list an army, you say, for example, if you had um, uh, like a fleet, if a fleet was moving from, uh, where is it, to... Okay, so if you had a fleet here, right, Oh, nope, hold on, let me move the camera so you can see it. So if we had a fleet here, a British fleet here, and it wanted to go to Norway, you'd essentially write it as um, fleet in the Norwegian sea goes to Norway. That's how you write a command. And the cool part about this game is that all everything, every move and every turn happens simultaneously, which is, I think, the, the more ingenious part of, in part of the game. Because you don't know who's going where until you until you reveal orders. So in between each round, you have time to talk to your allies, right? So in a seven-player game, you'd have seven different people all trying to get as many territory as possible. If I remember right, you win by capturing fourteen. Uh, you capture fourteen different um, uh, spots. You capture fourteen different spots. That's generally how it. How it goes. Uh, I could be wrong with that. I'll, I'll double check the numbers later. Uh, but what I wanted to do today, because obviously we don't have seven people here, uh, I wanted to talk about the opening moves uh, as well as maybe even uh, deeper moves later on. Just going into country analysis, talking about every single country and figuring out, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't work. Uh, so today uh, I figured we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and start with uh, the country that wins the most often or uh, I guess has the highest percentage of winning, and then we just go downward, uh, down the list. So, the country that happens to do that first, that has the highest win chance, is Russia. So we're, I'm going to adjust the camera real quick, and you got to see the, the whole board. Let me uh, angle back. Okay. Let's zoom in. Yeah, that looks fairly good. I think you guys will be able to see that. Let's zoom in a little more. Bring it up. Yeah. So this is Russia. Uh, Russia has uh, a couple of uh, different options it can do. Russia is the country that gets more pieces than any other country. It has, I do believe, about a 46% chance of winning. It's the highest in the game. And now, if you don't know how, uh, you know, the map very well, uh, that's okay. It's not, uh, not the end of the world. Uh, I might, at the later date, go ahead and make a video just that just goes over the entire map. But if you want to, uh, you can just go ahead and if you just Google diplomacy map, I'm sure you could find it here. I'll even uh, let's see if I have a blank map. I think I do have a blank map somewhere here. Right. So this is a traditional blank map. So you guys can go ahead and take a look at that for a second if you'd like to see everything. This is more for people. This series is a little bit more for people who have played the game before or uh, who haven't played but want to learn how to play each country. Uh, this will be done in, with an expectation of what I, what's called gunboat, which is essentially meaning that there's no communication between allies, because obvious, between your opponents, because obviously we don't have people here to, to talk about that. But what we're going to be doing is analyzing the opening moves of each country in the game. Uh, again, like I said, starting with Russia. So what are the options, right? So what, what does the options have? Well, uh, Russia starts with two armies and two fleets, okay? Uh, they have, they their first moves generally uh, are, are a little bit uh, more limited in terms of their fleet up here in the south coast of uh, St. Petersburg, which is essentially, they can either move out to the uh, the Gulf of Bothnia, uh, or they can go into Livonia, uh, Livonia. I'm gonna butcher a lot of names, by the way, just so you know. Or they can go into Finland. How, how is the boat going onto the land? Well, boats can travel along the coastline of any, you know, uh, of anything that connects. So, like, if I had um, a boat, say, uh, in the Baltic Sea, right, 
if, if I had a boat in the Baltic Sea, it could either go to Sweden, could go to Denmark, or it could go to uh, Pr Pr Prussia. Prussia. Blah. Words. But anyway, uh, so this is where it starts out. For Russia, they generally will do this on their first move. Uh, then that's where the options actually start to come into play. So, because uh, the second move for them is generally to go to Sweden to try and take that point. Uh, mo more common than not, uh, Germany will contest it and they'll bounce back. So there's a, boom, entrance to the, the combat in this game, right? So you don't actually kill anything. You don't roll dice. There's no dice rolling. You essentially need to move your guys into other areas to attack it. For example, if Russia had two armies here and Austria had an army there, uh, in order for this guy to get moved, uh, saying Warsaw goes attacks um, Galicia, that would be a one-to-one. -one. There would be no, no contact. What you can do is if you say, I'm going to have Warsaw go into Galicia and Ukraine will support it, they're, they're supporting that movement in, then it's a two-to-one. This unit, uh, the retreater, picks an area to retreat to that is not occupied by another space. So that's important to note. Each space can only be occupied by one uh, unit, by, by one, one unit. So that's very important to point out. So as you, as you probably saw, that is a, a, also an example of what Russia can do for their opening moves. For example, a very common opening by Russia is to do something like this. You go Galicia to Ukraine to uh, Romania. That's a, that's a pretty typical opening for their first move, uh, in, therefore implying the second move that uh, Galicia would, um, would be trying to get a stab at um, either uh, Vienna or Budapest. That's, that's pretty typical of Russia, nothing too fancy about that. Another uh, very common opening uh, for Russia is to do something where they go out, they attempt to go to the Black Sea, obviously as you, you'll see, uh, Turkey is there. Turkey also has access to the Black Sea, in which case that would cause a bounce. Uh, for example, if Russia went for the Romania approach and uh, the fleet in Ankara would just immediately take over the Black Sea. So you see how, um, you know, we'll just say, because this, this is the typical Turkish move. Well, all the, all the countries kind of synergize, but in this particular position, uh, assuming they did this tactic, it'd be a two to two, to two right? So this would be supporting it because uh, you can only get two units on there. Uh, so that's just one That's just one situation that could come up. Uh, so depending on what you can convince Turkey to, again, a lot of this a lot of this game has to do with the, uh, the diplomacy side of it, right? So if you can convince your allies to do something weird, uh, like for example, if Russia were to uh, convince Turkey to do something like this, this is not, or actually they would just hold that, uh, that would be a very non-aggressive approach for Russia to get the, the Black Sea on the first turn and, and do about it like that. Uh, again, that also depends on what Austria does. So another common opening for Russia that you can do is to do a, a two and two split, right? So it means if we come up here, I'm gonna, we have it on the, this camera on a stand, so give me a moment. Okay, so another thing that Russia can do, which is, uh, which is a little more common is of course you can bring the uh, the St. Petersburg out to the Gulf of Bothnia. You can take Moscow. You bring it up into St. Petersburg. Now you notice St. Petersburg uh, is in fact connected to both uh, Finland and Norway. Uh, so that would mean on their second turn, uh, even if there's a bounce out here from uh, from Germany, uh, on the next turn they could be in Norway or more more likely Finland to be able to then support the boat in right with the army that connects supporting this fleet to go in, making the German fleet forced to pull out. So that's another way that they would do it. You might even, if you're doing a German attack, you might say, for example, move into Silesia, causing there to be some headbutting over there. So that's another pretty common uh, Russian opening that you can that you can do. Another one, which I think is uh, the, probably the, uh, no, well, not the most common, but a pretty pretty interesting one is to go ahead and do go into Prussia, go into Moscow, or, or go from, from Moscow into Ukraine, uh, have this guy, the Romanian boat, go leave on its own, and then have, of course, you still, well, you still go into the Gulf of Bothnia, but this time, uh, Germany has something to, uh, to contend with, because, uh, 
the typical typically the Germans are going to be fighting the uh, the English and the French so they're not necessarily expecting an all-out Russian attack and that's for example first turn because second turn what you're doing is you're implying that you're gonna um, uh, because typically there has to be a German out there so you have two to one so what you're saying is you're gonna support yourself into this spot not necessarily capturing anything but you say yourself up to be able to capture on the next turn with going into the Baltic as your next move therefore making it so you have a three on two uh, advantage over the Germans that's one way to do it however of course depending on what England does you might you might make a different decision uh, and ideally uh, in this scenario since uh, generally Russia will only get one resource anyway uh, you're at least threatening to take more on the next turn because see now you have the option of either you could do a fake out and you go into Sweden anyway, or you would uh, just support, you know, you just support this movement in, these two guys supporting the middle guy to go in, so then you have a three to two uh, advantage, and then you'd have something like this, or uh, actually probably more likely like that. And that's general, that's, that's the way that the Russians can kind of dig their way through. Uh, however, again, uh, keep in mind that, you know, people are building uh, guys at the, every two turns, so every two rounds of movement, uh, you get to build units. You can either you can build an army on any dot that exists uh, that is within your home territory. So it's a little hard to see on this map. Unfortunately, I don't have the colors. But everywhere where there's a black line, like a thick black line uh, around a, a country, is 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 where a country is. So Austria-Hungary is in this zone right here. And it's not perfect. So Italy's Italy's here, right? Russia has the the big wall of of thick lines uh, but it, unfortunately it's not always uh, consistent so anyway yeah so that's a way you do uh, for example uh, an attack on Germany if you know attacking Germany is your your goal right pretty uh, pretty straightforward uh, now say you want to go after Turkey right uh, if you're like objectively and again obviously this is not including diplomacy you, or you know you know not including speaking to people of course if you were going you know say hey I want to go after uh, Turkey on your first move. You essentially move to the Black Sea, expecting to bounce out. Uh, that's that's pretty typical. If for whatever reason this guy's doing a cheeky Ar Ar Armenia thing, I I'd say that's a pretty weak move. However, what you do, what, you're, what they're implying is that with this position, uh, they're implying that they'll be able to to swipe that. While uh, actually, maybe he would just move forward. I don't know. That's kind of a, a turkey decision. This is a weak move. What you might see happen is something like this. And this is I'm just talking about scenarios where Russia just gets the Black Sea without having to having to bounce out of it. This is another thing you might see, which is again problematic if you know you went first move here, second move here. You know, if this was first move, then second move would be implied here, because you'd be you'd have an army there and an army there. So that's where that's where things get contentious. But if you were really trying to but let's say Turkey doesn't do the extreme move where Turkey's coming after you. In a typical Turkey move, you have the bounce where these two guys are stuck on uh, Sevastopol and Ankara, and then you have two guys right here ready to go in there. So the way the way you're you're doing that generally is on your second move, uh, what you might consider doing, depending on again what Austria does. Generally, Austria will move to Albania. Uh, you know they'll be defending in uh, Triolia. Uh, they're defending in Ty Tyrolia, and they're probably moving to Serbia. That's generally what they're going to be doing. So what you do is you want to maybe this is where diplomacy comes in, right? But if you can convince Austria to not to not have to help you, what you would then do is you would want to make sure you get you move into Romania with support from Ukraine, and then perhaps move to Armenia. Your or that is yeah, Armenia yourself. Even if that does give them that. You then will, uh, depending on how that works, you've now made it very clear to Turkey that you're about to take this spot if he doesn't move back, as well as you'll get a build, right? I know he gets a build too. He, um, he'll he get one build, so he'll probably realistically put an army there. Uh, generally, you're going to see an army there, and uh, you might see, an, you'll probably see an army in Sevastopol. But uh, that's what you're, you're threatening to do, right? Because you do a bounce first, and then you then you move in to prepare for the next round. And that's if you want to do a turkey a turkey attack. So that's that would be good if you have an an alliance with Austria, right? So that's typically what you'd want to be doing. Okay. Now, what if you say, "Hey, 
well, what if I want to ally with Turkey and we want to work with Turkey together? Well, how do you how do you do that? Well, uh, pretty typical. Uh, this is what's called the juggernaut. It's the, in my opinion, the best strategy, and it's the the most likely winning group. But essentially, here's what you're going to be doing. And I'm going to have to move the camera a bit for this. Because we want to look at it from their perspective. So you're attacking as a united front in this particular scenario. Right? So what's happening here is that you're going to be doing uh, something like this, where you have that go there, that goes to Romania, this goes to Ukraine. You let Turkey have the Black Sea. That's completely fine. Uh, and then what you might consider doing, or, uh, well... They'd go there. That, that's what their their first move would be. This is what would, what would be an Austrian attack. Again, I'm leaving Austria as it is because this is generally what they would do on their first move. This is the most typical opening because you're essentially you're you're moving the guy from Vienna into Tyrolia. Although personally, I prefer the Trieste move, but people don't seem to do that for some reason. I don't, uh, often maybe it's because Italy might not be in the game. And that just depends on how many players you have. But in a, in a seven-player game, if I was Austria, I'd be doing this move first. It's the most typical move. And on the first move, Vienna would probably move to Trieste to, to cover the bases. Uh, so that way, if there's any fanciness. You, Austria always needs to have a guy in there. And Austria really wants to get two builds. Builds are essentially what we call the phase in between the, the moving when you get to purchase troops. So if I was Austria and I did this, I, you know, this is what personally what I would do. But more commonly, it's played like that. So we'll go with the more commonly played version. If I was Austria and I knew that the Turkey thing wasn't working out, to, again, depending on your, your allies, uh, you'd essentially, what you'd have to do is uh, you want to move. You still, Austria would still probably support itself, support from Serbia, the fleet into there, because uh, this is a one-to-one, -one. this is a bounce. This, this cannot be fixed, uh, right? So you know uh, Austria is very likely to get two. But what you're doing is you're having Ukraine move to Glacia, and you're moving to Silesia. Now, again, you might get bounced, depending on what Germany does. Uh, but in their move, they're essentially doing this move, where they, uh, where they move in, and they're trying to do a shuffle. Is what, that's what Turkey's doing, right? So you're, these guys are just holding there uh, on their, on their uh, second... He, he's not moving on his second move, essentially. And that's uh, how, from Russia's perspective, let's keep in mind, this is Russia, Russia's perspective, um, you would then be able to, in turns three and four, uh, essentially, uh, with your build, because you'd you'd build, you're getting one for sure, and you'd you'd probably want to build in Sevastopol or probably Warsaw to then just start crushing in this way. That's assuming, of course, Germany has done the typical thing of of trying to. Here, let me make sure you can see that. That's assuming Germany has moved away, and you you could stab at Berlin, but I would do if you're going to make the juggernaut work and you want to work with uh, with Turkey. Uh, personally, I would not go to Berlin. I would go ahead and support yours and move in, move in and, and go in, the, in there into Budapest or Vienna on the, the consecutive turns after. So that's probably what I would be suggesting the Russian player to do if uh, that was what they were doing. So let's go ahead and back it up now. Uh, let me see if I can on the fly think of any more and obviously I'm happy to make more videos like addendums or extras added on. So what's another way of uh, Another way uh, they could do it. So we talked about how you can pierce Germany pretty quick. That's a that's an interesting interesting way to do it. But another way to do it is uh, what you do is you actually work with England. Uh, you what? So this is again this is the diplomacy. So if Russia, right? If Russia and England can work together, uh, here's some uh, an interesting strategy you can do, uh, which uh, it's better for you than for England, but sometimes it works out. So what you do is you have. The south coast go into the Gulf of, Gulf of Bothnia. Then you have Moscow go into St. Petersburg. Pretty good. What you're trying to do, and this is, again, remember, this is a German attack strategy. So you want to, I would take uh, Prussia instead of Silesia. Because while Silesia gives you more options, Prussia is a more clear, clear statement to Austria that you're not attacking. Oh, and you first move into Sevastopol. And you just, you're, you're probably not going to get, you're probably not going to get Sevastopol. Or no, sorry, you're probably not going to get Romania, but who knows? Because again, it depends on the diplomacy. If you have a, an Austrian-Turkish alliance, you're just kind of sad. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Uh, so anyway, so this would be your first move. What you're trying to do is get England to help you. So a uh, typical English move, and we'll we'll get to them. And again, all the countries work together. If you're if England was being peaceful, 
uh, they would be in this kind of a position. That's assuming they're peaceful with Germany. If you see that, that means they're coming towards you and not to there. But the interesting thing is, uh, on turn two, what they can do is actually go ahead and, um, well, not, not turn two. It would be a little bit more of a, a consecutive thing, but... Uh, what you would do is you'd pretty much pr be proposing some sort of a swap. So you'd say, "Hey, I'm gonna, we're gonna bounce. You're gonna, you're gonna acknowledge the bounce that's gonna happen, right?" So boom, boom, that bounces. So you're implying that the German fleet is going that way. Therefore, moving into Skagerrak or convoying onto Norway is, is you know, if you're going north as England, that's what you're doing, right? Uh, so what you're trying to do is essentially convince England to give you Norway. So you can build war on Warsaw and go from the land. That's what you're. That's what you're trying to get them to do. What you're trying to tell them, ideally, because while while what I just showed you for England is typical, what you're really trying to do is make England do something like this: English Channel, North Sea, and move their first troop into uh, Wales. Because then you're implying a French attack. Because um, what you're doing here, right? So you're. You're setting up what you do is, which in my opinion I think is a little bit stronger as Russia, right? Because what you do is you want to set up for for multiple turns of combat. So this would be your first move. Your second move, I, I'd argue, Baltic, give them that. Tell England to go into Denmark. Second move, you go Berlin, and then these guys go Norway, right? So Germany does get a point, but they lose it, and England will be gaining, presumably convoying over. Now, of course. Uh, Germany, upon seeing this first uh, th this first move, because remember the, the the fleet going there is to Denmark. Upon Germany seeing this, right, as if they did the standard, this is the position Germany would be in, right? If they saw this move, what you're thinking is, hey, I bet the English are coming down here to try and convoy into Belgium with support from this fleet. So that'd be a two strike. So you'd, you'd want to be making a deal here. So you, you're essentially saying, oh, well, he, he might convoy in there uh, because if it's a Wales, then you know it's a Wales convoy, so you know it's going to Belgium. If it's Yorkshire, then you know it's going to Belgium or Holland. This is actually a stronger play, but it does, however, tell Germany that you're not going after France. So essentially what you're saying is you don't expect it. You expect a bounce, right? You're expecting a bounce. Generally, Russia doesn't get anything here. But what's interesting about this setup is that essentially Germany says, okay, my second move, I support myself into Holland. It needs to get the two. It's attacking here with an implication that you're going to come in there and bounce. Uh, but what you're doing is you're essentially giving it up. You say, hey, we're going to take the Baltic Sea instead. England gets Denmark, Sweden, Norway. And then a convoy into Belgium is what, you're, is what you would want to do because Germany... Logically, this is the, the safer play, is to support itself into Holland rather than trying to go for the two and one. They might still do that, but, um, you know, it is possible to get bounced out and then they get nothing. If they're assuming it's an English attack for those ones and not Denmark. So see, then what you've done is you, you put Germany in position where while it is still getting its two, uh, it's not getting the two in quite the position it wanted, which makes it a bit trickier because now we have a fleet, an English fleet that can support... Uh, Kiel, going into Kiel in Berlin. So that's just some, some later game stuff. And of course, you know, we got to think about the whole world here. How can we get other countries involved to help? Now, Germany is very hard to play, and we'll probably need more than one video talking about Germany. Uh, I'm Again, part of the reason I'm starting with Russia is because they're the easiest to talk about. Because they, they really do only have so many moves, they can't, they can't do everything, of course. I'm just kind of looking at the board thinking if there's anything else I want to talk about in the Russia video. Um, I think that's about it. Obviously, I'll cover turn two stuff later, and it, they, it'll just get more and more extensive. But anyway, guys, uh, I think that's a good first episode. I think we covered a lot of in useful information about Russia. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you all so much for watching. As always, uh, I'm El Worfi, and I'll see you guys next time.